Love Talk Radio. This is Don West. This is Jeff Hardy, the charismatic enigma. Phenomenal one, AJ Styles. Guys, it's me, Pia Toscano from American Idol. This is Matt Hardy. And Chuck Zito, and you're watching Ring Fever. There is no cure. You've got to be kidding me. Hello everyone, this is Il Capo Jason Gotti, your host with the most, one of the best unsigned professional wrestlers in the game today. And what you are listening to now is the Ring Fever radio show, where the fans are the star. Hello everybody, welcome once again to another edition of the uh, Ring Fever radio show, or should I say... The MMA Hour Radio Show. No, that's already uh, been done. We got to think of a name. But uh, once again, we're back with uh, FWE Wrestling Zone, Uncle Steven, who uh, I will like to officially announce as my co host whenever we talk about MMA, because this guy is great. And uh, I loved the show last week. I hope everybody else loved the show last week. So once again, we're going to try this and we're going to um, start it off. Steve, how you been, Steve? I'm um, hanging in there. Let me tell you, it's been a, a crazy week. I know a lot of people have been affected by the hurricane. Uh, for our listeners affected, everyone affected, God bless. And I wish everyone a very, very safe and speedy recovery. Yeah, me too. Um, You know, the hurricane really, really hit uh, a lot of people, a lot of families hard, um, especially New Jersey and New York. Uh, I mean, I, I looked up. Uh, at some of the videos, you know, in New York, and uh, I think it's the, um, what's the tunnel, the Holland Tunnel, right? Um, yeah. And, like, we wrestled there, you know, not that long ago, three-legged dogs, real close to it, you know what I mean? And uh, I couldn't believe it, you know, and Jersey, too. There's people in Jersey right now that, um, you know, they're, they're, they don't have homes, they can't find gas, so, you know, it's really, it's really sad, and, uh, you know, unfortunately, there are a lot of, uh, assholes in this world that want to make jokes on Twitter and Facebook and all that shit, but, uh, you know, the bottom line is, uh, how would you like to feel if you were in that situation? And, you know, it is what it is, but I, I just want to, you know, commend uh, Governor Christie on uh, not, you know, worrying about politics for once and worried about, you know, the peoples, because he is a Republican and he, you know, embraced Obama, who was a Democrat, but we won't go into politics. Uh, I just wanted to put that out there, that that was really respectable and, uh, I'm really happy that most people are pulling together during this time. Exactly, and honestly, I hopefully everyone will be tuning in to catch, and, uh, catch the show. It's going to be another great one, and you know, uh, hopefully there'll be no more problems like the hurricane. And again, as someone's going through it personally, I have no heat, I have no water, uh, hot water that is, and uh, I'm you know, getting by, and everyone just needs to stay calm, thank God my house is still standing, I know many people that don't even have a home, so everyone just needs to be really calm and, and work together to get through such a, a calamity, and I think we'll pull through. Absolutely, absolutely, um, you know, I, I think that uh, in times like this, for the most part, uh, the human spirit, you know, does does come together. And um, I'm just glad, you know, when I, there's an old saying, whenever, whenever there's life, there's hope. And uh, I truly believe that. Um, but besides the point, let, let's go right into MMA, Steve. I mean, there's a lot of MMA talk to talk about, buddy. I mean, we had we had uh, RFA 4 that happened on Friday night. And we had the debut of the World Series of Fighting, which is Ray Seppo's company. And uh, I watched both events this uh, past weekend, I was able to. I uh, was off from work, thank God, because I love fighting. Um, so you know what? I want to talk a little bit about uh, the World Series of Fighting first. Um, Steve, were you able to catch any of the uh, the show, or did you just uh, happen to read the results? I had to read the results. Unfortunately, the lack of power uh, disconnected me from watching. But I'm, I'm kind of annoyed. I would have. I just can happen. I leave the week later because this show was really awesome. Yeah, man, it, it it definitely was. I uh, I actually seen the last minute, I would say, of the um, Josh Berkman fight, uh, which was on the prelims on Sure Dog, and uh, then I watched the entire main card. Um, so let me just read the results first, and then uh, I'll talk about a little bit about the matches that I seen, and uh, we'll go from there. 
Um, on the prelims, we had uh, David Branch defeating Dustin Jacoby. Uh, forgive me, I can't pronounce some of these words, especially with guys I'm not familiar with. Uh, it looks like it's Jazius, uh, Jay-Z Cavalcante defeated TJ O'Brien. Josh Berkman, former UFC veteran, defeated another former UFC veteran, and Gerald Harris. Then we had Steve Carl defeat Remico Block Blackman. Uh, Brian Cobb defeated Rooney Torres. Tyson Steele de defeated Gregor Gracie, which they actually showed a little bit of that uh, fight uh, towards the end of the show. Um, I'll talk a little bit about that, uh, the clips that I've seen. Gracie had him in a triangle transition with an armbar. Steele got out and just pounded him out for the TKO. Now let's talk about the main card, which I did see. We had Tyrone Spong uh, making his MMA debut, a K-1 veteran, a man that really, really, you do not want to stand and bang with this guy. And I'll be the first to tell you, I was afraid, man. If I was Bartlett, I would have been shaking in my boots. And that's just exactly what Travis Bartlett, his opponent, did. Uh, Bartlett, you know, I can't think of his record off the top of my head. I believe he's 8-2. and two. Um, all of his wins coming from uh, KO because of his boxing background. Now, Sprung, he was he was really mixing up his Muay Thai, really mixing up his strikings, transitioning from kicks and punches. And, uh, you know, Boss Rutten, I believe, said, you know, most boxers, especially if they're not used to the MMA format or kickbox format, they don't see the, the kicks coming, like the roundhouse kicks. And uh, Sprung was really throwing the kicks, man. I mean, in fact, uh, Steve, he, he knocked him out cold, walked away, uh, after he after he knocked him out, thinking there was a there was a ten count like in uh, like in K one like in kickboxing, I was really impressed with Spong, and I think he really truly is going to be uh, a force to be reckoned with, especially training with the Black Zillions. We have uh, Antonio Silva, uh, Overeem did train with them no longer, um, Rashad Evans, and a bunch of other great fighters. Uh, who else trains there? Anthony Johnson. Who will fall on the card? But um, it, it was really impressive, Steve. Any thoughts about uh Tyrone Spong? I'm, I know you know who that is. Oh, without a doubt, uh, he had some excellent credentials. I knew just off the bat, hearing the name, what he's done in G1. Most enemy or game one enemy transition has been successful because that's the end of the day, these guys are one class strikers. Say what you want about being one dimensional, he's raised an incredible arsenal of. The things you're mentioning, the strike you're mentioning, the incredible arsenal that would give anyone a problem. So, was that a, a, was that, was a light heavyweight division fight? I believe, maybe? Yeah, but it all stuff, yeah. Yeah, he, uh, he, really, he really is a good um, fighter and really knows how to mix things up um, as far as his striking and everything else. So, I was, I was really impressed with uh, Spong's debut, too. Also, we had uh, Marlon Moraesis, I believe that's how you pronounce his name, I, uh, defeating Miguel Torres. That, my friend, was was an upset within itself. Uh, Torres was the heavy favorite, and it seemed like uh, Marlon just came out of nowhere and really, really outclassed Torres. I was really surprised with the striking abilities of Marlon and uh, how you know he was able to really control the fight, push the pace, and even had... Torres, who uh, you know is, is known for his brawling style and uh, being aggressive, backing up. What are your thoughts on that fight, Steve? You know what? I read about it, and I was, I was terribly shocked to read. I, I thought Torres was going to bounce back effectively. He's been on a bit of a, a skid, if you will, and he hasn't really looked the same since exiting the WEC. And when he ended his tenure over at the WEC, on some, you know, he ended on a win. But he did have a couple of brutal losses, including his knockout loss uh, when he lost the belt, and he also got submitted by Joseph Benavidez. So he's looking more and more invincible. He's, he's not he's not invincible. He's not the same fighter that everyone's, oh, wow, Miguel Torres, top 10, pound for pound. And it's unfortunate to see him kind of hit this decline. I, I was reading up on the results, and a lot of people were reporting that he seemed to be a shadow of himself. Which is heartbreaking, because I'm a huge Miguel Torres fan. Yeah, ab absolutely, Steve. Um, me too. You know, I think uh, you know things happen to fighters. Um, they lose their edge. I did watch the fight. I don't think the guy looked terrible at all. I think uh, a lot of the fanboys, which come on, you know, we are. But I, I think what we separate is that we actually respect the fighters, and we don't get things twisted. We're just fans and giving our thoughts. We don't try to bury the fighters unless they deserve it. Um, 
No, he didn't. He didn't look that bad, man. He really didn't. It's just that that guy was good, man. He really was. And I think Torres can bounce back from it, and uh, you know, come back to the old Miguel Torres because you know, I mean, the guy's like has like forty eight wins, I think forty six wins, and this is only his sixth loss. Give the guy some credit. He he's fought some some really classy fighters, and uh, I think uh, Marlon was was a sleeper. Now Marlon was an, it was announced after the fight that he's going to fight uh, Tyson Nam, who uh, upset at the Belter champion. So you know. That, that should be a good fight, Steve. Now, I'm going to segue a little bit and uh, talk about the next match, which, oh my God, in my opinion, was knockout of the night. It reminded me kind of the movie Friday uh, when uh, Debo got knocked out by Craig because he got knocked the fuck out. Anthony Johnson, bro. Anthony Johnson destroyed DJ Linderman. I'm telling you, it was ridiculous, bro. And the thing about that is, initially in the fight, Johnson kicked uh, Linderman r right in the nuts. It was like an episode of uh, South Park, a little Rochambeau I thought they were playing. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, here, here's the thing that, that was interesting about it. Johnson got eye-poked, which, you know, I don't think Anthony Johnson can have a fight without getting eye-poked. It's like, it's like me when I, when, when I see cookies. I got to eat them. He, that's the same thing for him. He, you know, he's got to get eye-poked in a fight. But the guy's good. So he got eye-poked. Uh, I believe it was Mazagati. Didn't stop it. Or, no, 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 I'm sorry. It was Herb, it was Herb Dean. It was Herb Dean. You're right. He, he didn't stop it, you know, to check his eye. Linderman went in for the kill and bam, straight right hand, knocked him out, head first the guy fell, and it was great. It was, really was. Wow. Yeah, bro, you gotta, you really gotta look seriously. Like, I'm not even putting the jazz on it for the show. You gotta watch that knockout. It was, it was fucking good. It was really good. Yeah. I was like, oh! <laughs> I, I had heard it. it the way it was written, it was written, it sounded vicious, and Anthony Hello? Steve? You still there? Uh, we might have lost Steve for a second. Let me try this again. Let me try to call my buddy back. But, uh, yeah, speaking of uh, the, the Johnson fight, it, it really was devastating. Um, Anthony Johnson, since uh, being released from the UFC, has uh, really, really showed that uh, he's a great fighter and that, you know, he was just in the wrong weight class. Now he's uh, moving up to more of his natural weight. Which is 205. I think he walks around at 215. The guy used to fight at 170, missed weight three times, uh, which is the reason that he was cut against that fight against um, Vitor Belfort uh, a couple months ago. So I'm going to try to call Steve back and uh, we'll see We'll see what's going on. Steve, are you there? Yeah. I'm okay. Sorry. Uh... Don't worry about it. I, uh, I, I covered for you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Steve is back, everybody. A uh, little technical difficulties. Uh, maybe uh, DJ Linderman was tapping the phone or something. Who knows? Maybe the feds or his family. <laughs> probably. Given the circumstances, what, uh, you know, he's probably not going to fight anymore. But uh, as I was saying about Anthony Robo Johnson, I've been a fan of his. Uh, either, but regardless of his reputation inside or out of the cage, he always brings a win or lose, and his, his record will tell you the guy's a finisher. Whatever position he's in, he's probably one of the biggest. Even fighting at light heavyweight, he's still a monster. Just it's like Alex Overeem, where they cut down. He's a cut down weight. Like how the hell did they ever make that weight class? Yeah. And looking at Andrew uh, and Rumble Johnson, you're like, how the hell did this man ever make it to 170? Where he was perfectly comfortable at 205. Honestly, I would love to see him get a few more fights in race that both company. And hopefully we see him fight for the UFC once again. This time I like anyway. Yeah, me too. I, I, I absolutely agree. And to answer your question, I actually asked uh, Chavello about this our, at our last show. Those guys starve themselves. Um, that's something I could never do. I love food. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I may be skinny, but I do agree. That, that, that's heartbreaking. <laughs> yeah, man. So now, uh, so now we're going to move on to the uh, main event of the World Series of Fighting. Uh, the very first ever main event for this promotion, it was a uh, former UFC champion, uh, Andre the Pitbull Arlovsky versus Devin Cole, who is a former IFL and Strike Force veteran. Um, this fight did not last very long, I believe. He knocked him out in uh, two. Well, it was two minutes, two minutes and some change. Yes, exactly. What, what Steve said, uh, overhand right to the back of the um, ear. Cole, Cole turtled up, bro. He, he didn't even, like, really try to defend himself. Uh, so, yeah, there, there was no, uh, this is something I like to throw around a lot. There was no uh, Bushido spirit, shall we say, in that fight. 
from uh, Devin Cole. Yeah, um, honestly, I was expecting a lot to come out aggressive. You know, he's been looking for a chance to really up himself, get his name back where it belongs in the elite heavyweight, which unfortunately his name hasn't been anywhere near there in a few years. But now I believe he's riding a uh, like three or four fight win streak with that win. Yeah. He's looking good. He looks like he's willing to exchange based on what I've seen. Um, he's very willing to exchange with uh, Devin Cole. And um, he stood toe to toe. Exactly. I mean, Ar Arlovsky has had a, a streak of bad luck. You know what I mean? His his last fight before uh, the recent, it is a three-fight win streak uh, with one no contest against Tim Sylvia, which is bullshit. He beat him, so I want to say a four-fight four, four uh, fight win streak. But yeah, I mean, he ever since, you know, he left the UFC, I mean, he was doing good. He left the UFC. Uh, his last fight was against Jake O'Brien at UFC 82, which I believe he was the first man to beat Jake O'Brien. Actually, he was the first man to beat Jake O'Brien, and he stopped him by uh, punches, TKO. Then he went on to Affliction Ban, beat Ben Rothwell, knocked him out, which is a tough thing to do to beat Big Ben Rothwell, knocking him out. And he is the only man, which some, actually most fans, hardcore fans like us know this, but a lot of casual uh, listeners don't. He was the first man and only man to ever knock Roy Nelson out. This guy has dynamite in both of his hands. Then he went on a skid, you know, losing to Fedor, which I think he would have won that fight if he if he didn't try that flying knee, Fedor caught him. And then he had, you know, Brett Rogers, uh, Antonio Silva, and uh, Sergey uh, Karantinov. Uh, Arlovsky came back um, after after those four losses being cut from the Strike Force uh, promotion with a TKO against Ray Lopez for Pro Elite. Then he beat Travis Fulton with an awesome head kick for Pro, Pro Elite 2. As I said, the uh, no contest against Sylvia. And he, then he beat uh, Devin Cole. So I think Andre basically, uh, you know, I, I, here's the thing, in my personal opinion, it's just my opinion. I think a lot of guys, when, when you're that good and you're getting paid that much money, because he got paid a mil and a half for that uh, a million echo fight, um, you know, they lose some of their edge. They lose some of their hunger. And I think that's basically what happened to Arlovsky. I, I don't think uh, Arlovsky was ever a bad fighter. Um, a lot of guys talk about his chin, and yes, it could be suspect, but, you know, it, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Not not everybody can, you know, take great punches. Do I think he has the worst chin in the world? No. But now that he's training with uh, Greg Jackson, who I don't like, but he is a good trainer, and, and, and Greg Jackson's camp, um, I think uh, we can see a reignited pit bull and uh, maybe some foaming of the mouth and biting people. What do you think, Steve? You know what? I agree. Uh, the Greg Jackson training camp that he's now working with, Jackson's MMA, has really seemed to show a lot of promise for him. He's very willing to engage. But let me tell you that you mentioned that head kick of Travis Fulton. And say what you will about Travis Fulton. I'm sure he's nowhere near maybe even top 30 heavyweights. Mm -hmm. So regardless, that man has fought actually has the record for the most MMA fights. He literally is the Ironman MMA. And he gave it to the gave it to Travis, and he, he laid him out with a vicious, vicious head kick, which is something you don't see a lot so often. Mm -hmm. And it, it's good to show that he's evolving regardless of the losses that he had that preceded that fight. And honestly, like you said, I really believe that this new training is going to kick in. You see a much more ferocious Olofsky, the one you used to see, back dominating uh, the UFC heavyweight division before that went to uh, guys like Jay Velasquez and Junior Dos Santos. But regardless, I think Olofsky's back. He's looking better than ever, and I think his willingness to exchange to uh, combat with fighters the way he does now is shown in that trade. Absolutely, you know what? You're absolutely right. Uh, a lot. Travis Fulton is a journeyman fighter. He, uh, like you said, uh, I can't. I, I, I trust you, but I can't confirm, so I'm not going to say it's exactly right that he has the most MMA uh, fights. But he's definitely up there with Jeremy Horn and Dan the Beast Severed. So yes, I mean, I don't, I don't think that uh, you know beating Travis Fulton is, is is an easy job whatsoever. You understand what I'm saying? And. Uh, I, I absolutely agree. I mean, you've seen him mixing up more kicks now. Arlovsky mainly relied on his boxing and a little bit of Sambo, a lot of leg locks, which is how he beat uh, Tim Sylvia for the championship, if you remember. Um, you know, so yeah, he's Jackson's known for throwing kicks, you know, uh, mixing it up. Uh, if you look at Carlos Condit, you know, guys like that. Even even um, uh, <laughs> John Jones, you know, good fighter, um, obviously. You know, he throws a lot of kicks, too. So, you know, I, uh, I just want to say about the World Series of Fighting, then we'll go on to the next topic. Um, I, I was really impressed with uh, the way that they uh, 
presented the show. I thought I thought it looked good. I thought it looked uh, professional. Um, Ray Sefo, you know, did a great job. Um, you know, and absolutely, uh, even even uh, the guy that they had commentating with um, Boss Rudin, he didn't do a bad job. You know, his, his name off the top of my head, I forget already. What's his name? Uh, uh, Todd Harris. Todd Harris. He he did a good job. Um, uh, the voice uh, Michael Chavello and Boss did uh, the um, prelim on Sure Dog. Uh, personally, uh, yes, we all know I like the guy. Whatever. But even if, even if uh, Chevelle was the biggest asshole in the world, which he's not, he's really a great guy. Right, Steve? Yeah, Chevelle is the man. It goes without saying. Either way. I mean, I truly, I truly think that, that Mike is, is, is the best commentator in the business. I'm serious. I, I really do. I, I think he's the best for wrestling and MMA. And I'm not just saying that. I was just about to say that. And apparently, he's been doing multiple things these days. Uh, for those uh, MMA fans who aren't aware... Does commentary for wrestling, and he does an excellent job in both fields. And it's good to see that he's branching out, and he's still effective in both fields. Yeah, he's he's amazing. But uh, let's not suck his dick too much. So, <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey no, nah, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, yeah. So you know, so now I want to talk about uh the Resurrection Fighting Alliance uh four. Um, I thought that they did a really, really good job with that. Um, some some of the fights that we seen was uh, you know, let's see, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it off uh, top of uh, my head here because I have it in front of me. Uh, this is the prelim card. Uh, Jordan Asorta defeated Joey Angelo. Uh, Corey Galloway defeated Jerry Shapiro, and Steve uh, Moko defeated Tyler Perry. Chris Holdsworth defeated Tyler Shin. Um, now, on the main card, we had Sergio Pettis, who is the brother of uh, Anthony Pettis, defeating Jimmy Jones. That was a good fight. Seriously, that was... Excuse me, that was a really good fight. Um, Pettis was getting schooled in the first round and uh, wound up taking the next two rounds. Then we had uh, Dakota Cochran defeat uh, Derek uh, Burnset. I believe that was by uh, submission. Um, James Krause defeated... Oh, uh, God, how do you say this dude's name? Oh, uh, this fight... I remember this, this fight sucked, just so you all know. Uh, it, it was it was um, James Krause. Uh, he sucks. He wanted to basically just hump him to death. That's how he got the win. Um, I wish it was Pride. Yes, we're marked for Pride. But uh, he would have been yellow carded all day. He beat uh, Gilherme Trinidad, I think it is. Uh, then we had Lance Palmer defeat Fredson pa uh, Fredson Pajal. Then we had uh, Marcio Pedapano Cruz defeat Joe Yeager. Which uh, again, if any fans are watching this. Uh, you seen in between the second round that uh, Chevello gave me a shout out. That was me, Jason Gotti, one of the best wrestlers ever. Sign me, Vince. Anyway, he defeated <laughs> he defeated Joe Yeager. Yeah, I had dude. You know, I, dude, you knew I was gonna do it, dude. You knew it. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't blame you. I can't blame you, dude. I was, yo, let me just say, I was marking out. I ain't afraid to say that. Listen, I'm a huge MMA fan, man. You know what I mean? This is where I get to be a fan. I don't really get to be a fan anymore because I wrestle. You know what I'm saying? But uh, when I heard my name on TV, I was sitting there. I'm like, "Oh my god, he just mentioned me!" I was like, "It was crazy." But anyway, let, let's uh, let, let's not harp on that. Um, he defeated Joe Yeager. Uh, Marcio Pedapano Pe Cruz, uh, if anyone remembers, is the man who uh, stopped Frank Mir many years ago by strikes in um, the UFC. He actually cut down um, from 265 to 205 to make this fight because uh, originally he was supposed to fight uh, Gilbert the Hurricane Ibel, and uh, that just did not happen. Then we had uh, Chidi uh, Nijukani defeating Phil Dace. Uh, that was a, a good fight. Nijukani is a really, really a good uh, fighter, and I think that uh, we're going to have to watch out for him, man. I mean, I made a joke uh, on my Twitter saying that uh, he had a Muay Thai that, um, you know, Tung Po would be afraid of because, I mean, it, it, it was crazy how, uh, you know, he was able to uh, strike. Then we had uh, Tyson Griffin defeating uh, Efren uh, Escudero, both UFC veterans. Griffin really needed a win, and he was able to bang out the uh, unanimous decision. Steve, talk about that fight for a second. got to do something. Yes, without a doubt. That was the uh, main event for that fight card, and you saw Tyson Griffin take a decision victory over Efren Escudero, who both of these men were looking to get back on the winning track. Unfortunately, both guys have been recently, within the last year, uh, cut from the UFC, and they really needed that that win, that shining win, 
to get them right back on track, get their name back in the mainstream, get their name on headlines. And let me tell you, these guys went back and forth. And Escudero has had his own problems, much like the rise more or less of Anthony Rumble Johnson, has had problems mentally entering fights. He said that, you know, he didn't fight the way he wants to, is that he didn't make weight. He has missed weight a few different times, and unfortunately, I actually went to his exit uh, in the past. So he even cut twice from the UFC. The first time was due to losses and also because he failed to make weight. And he really needed this win to propel him into a, a status that would at least have him back on the UFC radar. And unfortunately, for Escudero, he failed to pass the test that was Tyson Griffin. And don't get me wrong, Tyson Griffin is no slouch. He had uh, prior to his fight been uh, knocked out, well, literally knocked out, uh, in the UFC by uh, Pal Zetsky. Not Pal Zetsky, a very entertaining fighter. And uh, Tyson Griffin was looking to rebound. And what better way to make it out on top than a win over a former UFC Ultimate Fighter winner and a fighter that got a lot of recognition while he was in the UFC. So I think Tyson's going to effectively use this win to get himself some bigger shows, uh, bigger, uh, better challenges, if you will. And I really think it's something that Tyson really needed. And I really like Tyson Griffin. A lot of people say that, you know, he doesn't finish fights and that, you know, he's a point fighter. And I disagree, you know. He, he's actually tried to fight, uh, finish numerous fights. And the guy always brings it. Win or lose, he's had the some of the best fights in the UFC. If you had to take fighters from the UFC that had some of the most entertaining careers in the UFC, Tyson Griffin's bouts with Frankie Edgar, he's had bouts with Clay Guida, he's had but literally a who is who of battles and win or lose, he always put on the show. And I think it's really good for Tyson. I'm glad he won. And I'm sure Escudero, he, he's a pretty young guy himself. He'll bounce back from this and we'll see him probably on a, another uh, fight card in, in the regional circuit. A absolutely. I agree a uh, hundred uh, percent with what you're saying. Uh, I was listening to you. I uh, had to tell my sister to shut the hell up because <laughs> I'm, I'm recording this right now. <laughs> um, yeah, it's me and my sister. We live together and we have uh, her baby, which is my nephew, so they make noise. But anyway, besides the point, we're, you know, hey man, this is the Ring Fever Radio Show, man. We're going to show our. Uh, Imperfections, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's where the fans are the stars. We're going to be real with you, right, uh, right, Steve? Without a doubt, it's the only way that we know it. So yeah, so um, absolutely, I agree 100. percent You know, Tyson Griffin has had multiple uh, fight of the nights, even a fight uh fight of the year against Clay Weed, a fight of the year for 2007. Um, his first loss was against uh, Frankie Yeager at UFC 67, which was a unanimous decision loss. Which hey man, you lose to Frankie Yeager. You know, hey, man, that guy's good. You know, he's one of the, the creme de la creme of uh, fighters. You know, so he's lost to some really good fighters. Uh, his second loss came to Sean Shirk at UFC 90, again, by unanimous decision. Then he kind of went on a skid, um, losing to Evan Dunham by a uh, split decision. The first time he was knocked out was against, uh, oh, and, and yes, once again, because we're marks for pride, Takanori Gomi, our boy. Yeah, we love the Fireball Kid. That's right. Uh, Gomi, if you're ever listening, uh, me and Steve uh, would love to get a picture with you, an autograph. You know, we're idiots, so that would make our day. Thanks. Anyway. <laughs> I totally agree with that one. <laughs> then he lost, then he lost uh, to Nick Lentz uh, by split decision. Actually, I think he won that fight. I'm going to be honest with you. But then he but then he uh, tested positive uh, for marijuana, which another fighter just did that. We'll get to that next. Um, and then he, you know, then he beat uh, uh, Manny Gamburian before uh, dropping another knockout loss, which is when Dana cut him because it was a catchweight fight. He tried fighting, uh, I think, what did he try fighting at, 135? Um, but, you know, he, uh, or 145, I'm sorry, uh, 145, but he, he failed to make weight, so Dana cut him. And this was his first fight in uh, over a year, just shy of a year, actually just a little over a year, against Escudero. Now, you're right, Escudero, you know, hey, man, things happen. The kid's young. He's uh, he's 26 years old. Um, you know, he's his record now is 18 and 6. Uh, and this is his third straight loss after losing to Jacob Volkman by unanimous decision at UFC 141. Then the Mac Danzig fight by unanimous decision uh, at 145. So, yes, he's had a streak of bad luck. But, again, I would like to see the guy um, come back. I don't think he got killed in this fight. I just think, uh, you know, Griffin definitely outclassed him. 
So now since, uh, you know, we, we covered those two cards, um, which I think were great, let's talk a little bit about uh, Stefan Bonner and Dave Herman failing their UFC 153 post-fight drug test. Let's talk about that, Steve. Go ahead. Yeah, basically, there was actually no regulating commission for the show over in Brazil. So at UFC, when that happened, they took it upon themselves to uh, administer their own drug testing. So following the conclusion of the uh, the fights at, uh, in Brazil, they, uh, they had the screen, they just tested everything. And unfortunately, two fighters, both um, who lost that night, were flagged for two different banned substances. Stephen Bonner was uh, tagged for anabolic steroids, mm -hmm. and there was marijuana metabolites in uh, trace in the, in the testing of Dave Herman. Yeah. Bonner, as we know, got destroyed by Anderson Silva. Dave Herman saw a uh, similar state except by the hands of Big Doc. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, as we talked about last week, Oh, excuse me. As we talked about last week, uh, Nod was able to uh, be the first man to submit Dave Herman after Herman uh, talked mad, mad smack about uh, jiu-jitsu, which uh, he's a moron. It's been proven a million times. And uh, honestly, uh, Herman should shut his mouth whether he was whether he was hyping up the fight or not. But if it wasn't for the Gracie family, and I'm serious about this, okay? You know, I, you know, I speak my mind and don't give a shit. If it wasn't for the Gracie family, there would be no UFC. So shut the hell up. I hope they cut you. So yes, he got um he got tested uh, positive for marijuana metabolites, and then uh, our boy Stefan Bonner once again gets caught for steroids. Which I mean seriously, I mean how stupid can you be? For it's your retirement fight, it's the biggest fight of your career, brother. You know what I'm saying? And you're gonna get caught once again for um steroids. I mean, listen, nobody really expected you to win, okay? So. Now, instead of, okay, he went out as a warrior, okay? Now he went out as, as a guy that not only got caught for steroids once, but twice. And it, it's just, it, it's tarnishing his legacy. What do you think, Steve? I unfortunately agree. You know, I'm a huge fan of, well, this point, I can't really say much. Kind of lost a few respect points for Bonner. Um, but I uh, need to say, Bonner is going to be a fighter. And it's a travesty to really see him go away uh, on, on such a, a low point. He not only... Took a, a bad loss to someone everyone knew you to lose to. But on top of that, he announced his retirement and then gets busted for Lloyd, which is something that which was something that had occurred not even oh, it was about three what three three years ago. And you would think that ah, such a, a great you know honestly, people like to say that the ultimate fire you they don't I, they like to say that the ultimate fire rather it wasn't as, you know, it took MMA out of the dark ages, and that it, it, it popularized it. And you know what? Some of the hardcore enthusiasts like to not the ultimate fighter, and that, you know, these guys like Forrest Griffin and Bonner don't deserve the credit, but I still stand by it. Honestly, I thought if it wasn't for the ultimate fighter, UFC, MMA would not be at the level where it is today, and I stand by that. Yeah, absolutely. So, I honestly, honestly, to see someone like Bonner who has that reputation, he was... I think him and Forrest Griffin cemented the ultimate fighter with that battle. And for that to, for that shining moment to end up just like this, uh, what, what is going on, Stephen? Yeah, you know what, exactly. I, I agree um, 100% with you. Um, they definitely did, uh, as far as put the U UFC and MMA on the mainstream, uh, as far as the American fans, it was always big overseas in Japan. It really was, always. Which is why, initially, guys were leaving UFC, especially when uh, Senator John McCain, you know, took him off pay-per-view. And that was during the, um, oh, what the hell's, Art Davey, uh, when he owned, owned it before uh, Dana and then bought it. So, yeah, um, I agree with you. Uh, it, it, it's a shame that... Um, He's going to go out for not only being a one-time uh, steroid user, but uh, a two-time steroid user. And, uh, you know, if that's what he wants to do, then that's what he wants to do. But I think it was stupid. Um, I'm pretty sure, you know, I, ca I can't be 100% sure because I'm not piss-testing Anderson Silva. But I don't think Anderson Silva uses steroids or has ever used steroids. You know what I mean? And look at that guy. Look at someone like a Fedor Emelianenko who, you know, doesn't have the bodybuilder, you know, look. But, you know what, this isn't... Oh, man, this isn't pro wrestling where you got to look, you know, like like a bodybuilder to to a certain degree. You know, this is this is MMA, and uh, I just think it hurts. I just think it hurts the sport because this is a sport. Yes, it's entertainment, 
but this is a sport, and um, I really, really, it pisses me off when a lot of these guys, you know, are cheating and, and using steroids. Uh, and we lost Steve once again, so, yeah, but, um, you know, it's just, it, it's really ridiculous that uh, these guys want to use steroids, and they want to use performance-enhancing drugs, uh, you know, to, to try to make the fights, uh, I guess, more in their way. Uh, okay, we lost, we lost Steve here. Um, he should be calling back in any second now. But yeah, I mean, you know, you really don't want um, to to go out as as a cheater like that because you know Stefan Bonner really truly has had some great fights. You know what I mean? From his debut, you know, on, uh, in the Ultimate Fighter season, uh, season finale one with Forrest Griffin. I mean, that was great. Steve's calling back, so uh, here he is. Here's Steve. Steve, you there? All yeah, right. Post Hurricane Sandy, you know what? It's been quite the tri uh, the trip, if you will. And um, viewers, listeners, thank you for pay, uh, being with us. I enjoy my heart to be with you all. There's a lot to talk about, and uh, let's get right back to it. So exactly. I'm saying, there, there was a lot of um, problems with Bonner, and that I, I'm almost, he actually has accepted the fine. I know that much. Still has Dave Herman, actually. So they both admitted to what they're doing, but. Um, a lot of fighters, you know, not every fighter, and you, Jason, you, you've seen this, you know, not every fighter walks into a fight 100%. That's a given. No fighter is going to. It's just a, re a reality. There's always going to be a problem, and there's, there's no, no, there's injuries and stuff like that, you don't want to lose. You miss the fight or lose the fight, and you want your body to be in the best state to, to win, but at that point, you're still... You know, it's, it's cheating at that point, you know what I mean? You're going to rehabilitate yourself, you know, unfairly, you know, speed up processes, um, and, and at that point, you're not coming into a fight the way you would have gotten into a fight. And at that point, you're coming in well over 100%, and that's not fair to Anderson Silva, who didn't take that, you know, he didn't take that literally medicine either as, as well. Anderson walked into the fight, he didn't need to do that. I'm sure he wasn't 100%, but we still saw what he did. Absolutely, absolutely. No, no fighters, for the most part, very few are 100 percent when when they come to the fight. There, there's an old saying that's saying fights are won in the gym, and I truly believe that. Um, so yes, I mean, you know, let, let's go on. Since we're talking about this, let's go on the topic of uh, PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. Um, you know, recently Matt Riddle also tested positive for marijuana. Matt Riddle has a has a marijuana uh, card. You know what I mean? From uh, I believe he's a, a Vegas guy. Which is the reason why he he moved to uh, Vegas. He has a, a legal, um, I believe it's a 502 card, is what they call it. That's in California. I don't know if that's what they call it in uh, Nevada. But he had a legal card to uh, smoke marijuana, and basically he's not smoking it to just get high or party or whatever because he needs it. Um, do you think that uh, uh, marijuana is a performance enhancing drug? I mean, a lot of guys have been called with it, like Tyson Griffin. Um, let's see, Dave Herman. Yeah. Uh, amongst the, probably the most prolific would be uh, Nick Diaz, but um, there's been numerous guys getting busted for marijuana use, bitch, like you said. I have to mention that Riddle, Dave Herman. Um, honestly, I, I don't uh, I don't necessarily see how that's a performing and acting drug. Um, don't get me wrong, it, I see it as a recreational drug, and I don't, I don't, I, maybe you can, you know, Tell me otherwise, but I don't understand or see how that would necessarily perform, like, enhance any performance. No, no. I mean, listen. I, I don't. I don't think you can uh, enhance any any performance either. You know what I mean? I think. Uh... You know, it, like you said, it, it's, a, it's a recreational drug. I don't think it's going to make you stronger or, um, you know, anything anything like that. You know what I mean? Make you uh, have an edge as a fighter. Um, I think my personal opinion, and this is my opinion, I don't smoke marijuana uh, anymore. I used to when I was younger. Not anymore. Um, but, you know, being that I have some experience with it, and I think most people, you know, in their life have smoked, you know, at least one time, especially as a kid, teenager or whatever. Um, you know, they, they can realize that it's not, you know, really a drug per se as other drugs. Um, there are people um, that do, you know, need it for uh, anxiety issues, depression issues, uh, pain management, which is why it is legal, like in California, uh, even Canada, certain parts, um, Nevada, which you have to go to a doctor and get regulated. I think if you go to a doctor and you, and you get regulated and, and they say, okay, no, you need this, then I don't see any problem with this. Um, I don't think it'll 
perform, uh, make anybody be a better fighter. You understand what I'm saying? Uh, it's just, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, now, with that said, steroids and, uh, you know, the uh, testosterone replacement therapy, TRT, um, I think guys are fucking really taking advantage of that shit. You know what I mean? I think, you know, even uh, Forrest Griffin, it was announced that he had TRT after the Tito Ortiz fight. And uh, who's to say maybe Tito would have won that decision if, if, if uh, Forrest wasn't all gassed up? And Forrest is young. He's like 32 years old. You know, a lot of these guys that have low testosterone when they're 30, they're not going to admit it, but they've used steroids in the past. That's where that comes from. Okay? So it's bullshit. Now, once you get in your 40s, I understand it does start to go down. But listen, if you're 25 years old, 26 years old, whatever, mid-20s to 30, 31, 32, whatever, and you're taking that, there's something wrong. Don't you agree? Yeah, honestly, when you see the caliber of fighters, two guys come to mind. Dan Henderson and Randy Couture. Both of these men, over 40 years old, and still handling their, you know, Couture obviously retired at this point, but still stands. Both of these men have gone into the cage, and age was certainly not a factor, and TRT was not either, and, and Dan Henderson is probably the best example of that, coming in, he's over 40, I believe, and yeah, 42. at this point, Dan, he was the number one contender at light heavyweight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think he's the number one contender because of his, his uh, iron-like chin, uh, you know, and the power in his hands. It's like we said last week about uh, the puncher's chance uh, of always winning. And, uh, you know, what? Since, since we brought this up, who do you think is the best chin, e chin ever in MMA? Who do you think? Best chin? Uh, honestly, gonna go with Dan Anderson. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I gotta, I gotta agree with you, too. I mean, he's never he's never been knocked out. Uh, but you know what? If, if we don't... Listen... If we go in the history, if we go in the history of MMA now, how old are you, Steve? I don't even know. I'm 22. Okay, so we're we're around the same age. If you if you go if you go in the history of MMA, there's other guys that that really um you know never really been knocked out either. Boss Rutan's one of them, I believe. I don't think Boss ever got knocked out, knocked out. Now listen, people can get TKO'd, you know what I'm saying? But really knocked out cold. That's what I'm talking about. He's one of them. Uh, Tito Ortiz, he's been TKO, but he's never been knocked out cold. Uh, Nelson, even though he has one knockout, I think he's one of them. Mark Hunt's another one of them. Um, and but yeah, Dan Henderson, I think uh, never been TKO'd, never been knocked out, My other hands example, down. Actually, was um, Chris White's out Lytle. Oh, okay. He retired um, about a year ago. He's actually only been TKO'd only due to cuts, and those are against fighters like Tiago Alves, for example, who are some of the most vicious strikers at welterweight and he's fought a who's who at welterweight and every single one of his losses I believe he had about maybe 15 decision losses and as I just said they were decision losses mm -hmm. the guys to like you know Matt Hughes Matt Sarah guys who really have been at the top Josh Kostick guys who are can knock your head off you know what I mean and that alone is a very impressive a absolutely uh, and it's interesting I don't know if you're aware Oh, excuse me. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but um, World Series of Fighting, they did not allow elbows at all. So oh, that, wow. Yeah, and that, dude, I know, right? I was like, because they kept saying it. I'm like, well, wait a minute. I thought this was unified rules, but I guess it was modified unified rules. Which, you know, because I, I guess they didn't want the fights to be stopped for cuts and stuff like that. Which is interesting, and it's a different take uh, as far as uh, Americanized fans watching the UFC and stuff. Um, so, yeah, it, it was interesting. Um, but, all right, let's talk a little bit about, uh, since we spoke about him last week, uh, Antonio Rodrigo uh, Minotaro Noguera. It has been announced that uh, he will be facing Fabricio Verdum, uh for the next taping of the Ultimate Fighter Brazil. Uh, what are your thoughts on that, Steve? You know what? I Did we just lose Steve again? Wow. I think, uh, oh, you're back? Oh. It all out, but, unfortunately, um... You know what? I, I, I think it's a good move for him. It progresses his career a little bit longer. He's going to fight Verdun, which is actually a rematch um, from the Bout and Pride, mm -hmm. which I believe was in 2006, where uh, Big Nog won a unanimous decision. He'll be facing uh, Verdun at the conclusion of the second Brazilian season. And you know what? I think Verdun's got his number this time. Yeah, um, I'm, I'm going to agree with you. I, I think uh, Verdun definitely has his number as well. Uh, Rodrigo uh, Noguera, you know, he's at the end of his career. And we just lost Steve again. So apparently uh, Rodrigo Noguera and um, Tyson Griffin 
and every other uh, MMA fighter that we've talked about is tapping my phone and cutting them off. I'm just kidding, and now Steve's calling back. So, okay. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, we lost you for a second. I was just saying how uh, I think uh, all the MMA fighters that we talk about uh, are uh, tapping the phone calls here and uh, cutting them. So, no. <laughs> Absolutely, absolutely. Steve, uh, Steve's a, a trooper, man. Don't let his stature fool you. Uh, this guy, this guy, let me tell you a little bit about Steve, man. This guy, we, we did a convention. Remember when we did this convention? The one in Essington, near the airport, near the yep. Philly airport? And you were secure. <laughs> and he's, listen, Steve's watching uh, this uh, box, because they had, FW had, uh, who do we have? Uh, Miss Tessmacher and uh, Victoria or Tara, or whatever, right? And uh, people were signing, you know, they were signing autographs, and, you know, we were there with the convention. I forget what convention it was, but uh, this little pit bull, man, we were making jokes. <laughs> he was, like, watching the box and shit. I was like, look at Steve over here. Yeah, so he's a he's a tough little guy. No offense, buddy, but you are. <laughs> You're a tough guy. <laughs> All right, so uh, back, back to the MMA talk. Yeah, man, uh, I, I think uh, Verdum's going to beat him, too. I, I, I'm hoping that he doesn't destroy him. Because uh, we love Nog, man. Don't don't get it twisted. We do. We really do. We just want the guy to not tarnish his legacy. And uh, we're a huge fan of uh, him. And uh, I, I personally respect him a lot as a fighter. I mean, he has the biggest heart and uh, truly embraces the Bushido spirit, which is why I think he was, you know, so over in Japan. Um, and, yes, Steve, I looked it up. Uh, he did uh, – Verdum did lose a uh, unanimous decision at Pride Critical Countdown 2006. And that was the Openweight Grand Prix, uh, Grand Prix quarterfinal, which eventually uh, Mirko Krokop won. So, yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that fight, Steve. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. You guys will be hearing it. I'm going to call it at least uh, what, half a year in advance. Going to go with Verdum by unanimous decision this time around. Okay, ab Absolutely. And, uh, you know, any any other news you want to touch before we uh, close the show? You know what? Um, there's nothing in particular aside from I'm hoping everyone gets very well from the hurricane. But uh, I was excited about WSFO. Ray Cecil presented a really awesome product. Um, there's a lot of awesome fighters that are on his fight, uh, his fight roster. And much like the guy who mentioned, Tyrone, whatever the weight division he was at, never found out. But whatever it was. It was very promising. There's a lot of awesome fight cards. I'm really excited to see him back in action. He was uh, Tyrone uh, Spong fought at 205. He fights at heavyweight and kickboxing, but he cut down to 205, which he's going to be a monster in my opinion. Uh, if I, I we didn't really get a chance to see his ground game because he kept it standing, but I, I would like to personally see him against somebody that has jits that can pull guard on him or uh, a wrestler, and then uh, we can truly see. Uh, you know, how, how good he, you know, has advanced mixed martial arts. Nobody's going to contest this guy's uh, kickboxing record or, or his striking. I mean, he's, he's a monster. You know what I'm saying? He's uh he's definitely up there with uh, Batahari as far as striking. Um, so, yeah, I think that's good. Speaking of kickboxing, Steve, you know when K1's supposed to be on TV? Because didn't they get a TV deal or something with Spike? Um, you know what? I actually did hear that as well. I think it's going to begin with uh, the Bellator rollout sometime, sometime next year. Sometime next year? Okay. Yeah, I believe early next year. And now, do you think uh, Spong uh, is, is going to be, you know, somebody that's really a force in MMA, or do you think he's going to just be, you know, because a lot of guys uh, that kickbox, and even um, Sefo himself have tried at MMA, did not do so well. Um, we had, you know, guys like uh, Overeem, but Overeem was an MMA fighter first. Uh, Jerome LeBanner, you know, went into it. Um, who uh, Mark Hunt, who and uh, you know, guys that uh, you know, Hunt Hunt did fairly well, I think. Uh, don't don't let his record fool you. Uh, he he just had lack of a uh, submission, but he's doing good. Um, do you think he's going to be a force in that, or do you think he's going to kind of peter out and uh, just basically be able to fight journey? Uh, I'm sorry, to beat journeyman fighters, or do you think he'll be able to be in a top ten one day with some more experience? You know what? Um... It's, it's 
really too early for me to say. Given the, the landscape of what you were saying, K1 fighters transition into MMA, who knows, he might be like Sefo, he may, he may be like Mirko Koka. There's a lot of fighters that uh, didn't necessarily translate well into the, the MMA world, given the fact that it's obviously more than striking. Mm. I want him to succeed, but will he be a top 10 light heavyweight? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go put this on record too. Uh, I don't think he'll be a top ten either, just because. Um, you know, I I haven't really seen all aspects of his game. Uh, that fight with Bartlett, you know, it, it was a good fight. I was entertained. I really was. I was like, holy shit! But uh, it was basically a kickboxing match. Um, and he really wasn't. You know, no clinching, none. Um, no takedowns, no jujitsu, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, do, do I want to fight this guy? Hell no. <laughs> I don't yeah, think anybody yeah. does. <laughs> yeah, no way. But uh, again, you know, when you're a professional MMA fighter and this is what you do for a living, it's it's a different story. Uh, you know, if guys were to always stand, you know, w with guys that we mentioned, um, like Cepho and, and uh, LeBanner, you know, they wouldn't have a shot. Um, you know, there, there's been always been kind of the, the kickboxer, you know, versus the MMA fighter, you know, back in the day. Uh, and initial UFCs. Then we had the boxer versus, um, you know, the MMA guy. Which more recently, uh, you remember the James Tony fight with Randy Couture? I was so glad Couture beat the shit out of him. I was so yeah, glad, was so glad. Quite for he pissed me off so bad. I'm just like looking at this guy, and I'm like, you know, I know this guy could kick my ass, but I'd fucking headbutt him and try to take his eye out of like, because he just made me so fucking mad. I'm not being serious. I'm not. I'm not even like adding jazz. He made me so mad. Just the shit that he was saying, because I'm a very respectful person. Unless you unless you disrespect me, then forget about it. But Couture is one of the most respectful class act athletes. He does not talk shit. And for him to say that and, and to talk about a sport that I love, I was so glad that Couture schooled that motherfucker, for real. And uh, sorry for getting a little mad, but that's how I really feel. You know what I mean? How about you? Yeah, honestly, that, that fight was actually the one I wish Couture uh, retired on. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, but he didn't. That fight literally cemented the whole, you know, boxing MMA argument. Even though there's a lot of boxing fights, no, I respect. I I know you do as well. We both respect the game of, of boxing. The mm -hmm. sport of boxing itself is something beautiful to watch. And I'm, you know, I was, I'm not the biggest fan now. Yeah, me I was a fan back in the day. Me too. Um, and I I moved on to MMA, but um, That's same here. Honestly. For anyone to talk crap and not back it up, that's what happens. Yeah, exactly. You keep keep running your fucking mouth, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you come in there, like James Tony, and he's like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to do, he had his toy, and he was, like, saying all kinds of stuff. It's like, yo, shut up, dude. Like, you, you're, you, I knew that was, and he ankle picked him. Do you have any idea how hard it is to ankle pick somebody? Seriously. Like, espe especially pro athletes. Like, that's fucking, like, he, dude, that, like, he ankle picked this dude. That's how he took him down. Like, that's ridiculous. That just goes to show you how shitty James Tony was and how in over his head he was. And he should have just shut his fucking mouth. Seriously. Like, I'm being, I'm asking you, I'm no, no jazz for this. You, you, that is something really hard to do to ankle pick somebody. You know that, right? Oh, yeah, trust me. I'm well aware. Okay. You know, so, and, and he just totally outclassed them, but, um. Uh, you know, we have a couple more minutes. Why don't we just Why don't we just fill out the time? Because I, I did say I want to get an hour. Is that okay? We have about seven yeah. more minutes. Okay. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. Um. All right. Now listen. Uh. Real quick, since since we kind of brought it up with Randy Couture, do you think uh, a lot of MMA guys? Um. And we did bring it up last week. Uh. Don't want to let go of some of that glory, some of that passion. Because listen, they they have a lot of sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? Um. As much as I I I really truly love pro wrestling. Um. You know. I think that yes. Us wrestlers sacrifice a lot, but I think MMA guys sacrifice just as much, maybe more. What do you think? You know what? In the context, I feel that MMA fighters do put more, it's a much more physical, you know, sport, if you will. Wrestling is, you know, scripted, it's choreographed, and, you know, it's, it's a bit safer. Don't get wrong, it has, it's, it's a danger. There can be a lot of dangerous activity in the wrestling, clearly. But in the MMA, you know, guys are. It's typical to get knocked out. Yeah. It's typical to get your arm broken. Yeah. It's typical to get your your leg snapped. You know what I mean? It's a different game, and I feel like in that regard, they do put much more physical into it because they put their, their bodies on the line more so. So 
So when you see guys that you kind of think should retire, like I think I mentioned before, I thought Couture should have retired after that fight with James Tony. He would have been, it was a co-main event fight. He, he, he made a statement, whatever it was, say what you will. I know not everyone believes that was MMA versus boxing, whatever. But it was still a statement. He got the job done. It was a three-fight win streak he was riding at that point. I believe he had Ibera, and he had another win prior to that. And unfortunately, he, he took, I don't, know, I don't know, I'm not Couture, but regardless, he took another paycheck, and he faced Machida, and he faced the consequences, which was that highlight real big boot to the face, yeah. slash crane kick, if you will. Karate kid, buddy. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And let me tell you, that was, that was beautiful. Uh, you know, regardless uh, uh, of me liking Couture or not, Machida delivered probably one of the, the nicest crane kicks I've seen in all of MMA. Yeah, yeah. But you know what? If Couture had, you know, and props, I'm not disregard. I'm not saying that you know Couture shouldn't take the fight or or not. But props to him taking the fight because Machida is clearly no joke. No. And it was just something I, you know, coming back to legacies. It would have been bad if he didn't go off on what Tony versus he's a not that long getting your pick left it by Machida's foot. A- abs- absolutely, and uh, now you can hear my house phone ringing. So. uh... I think uh, we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up and uh, once again, uh, you know, hey man, we're we're, uh, we're this is a learning process. And uh, next week when I shoot this, I'm gonna make sure to uh, do a couple things like turn my heat off, which I did in the middle of this interview. I don't know if you're aware of that, and uh, turn the uh, phone off too. So uh, again, I, I hope everybody really enjoys uh, our radio show. Um, you know, we're just fans, just like you guys. Uh, I don't know everything about MMA. Steve doesn't know everything about MMA. We don't claim to know everything about MMA. We're just fans, just like you guys. And uh, we're just doing this for fun because we, we love MMA. It's it's our hobby. It's, uh, you know, the things that we watch on TV. Steve, I don't know about you, but I don't watch sports. I watch combat sports. I watch boxing and uh, MMA. And this is my way to uh, relax and enjoy things. And uh, real quick, to wrap up what you were saying, as far as the pro wrestling and the um, MMA, uh, yes, King Mo, uh, you know King Mo is, he, he's doing the wrestling now with uh, TNA. He uh, actually went, and then Steve loses me again. Unbelievable. We are so getting tapped by these guys, I'm telling you. Let me uh, let me try to call him back real quick, and then uh, we're going to wrap this up. But uh, yes, uh, the pro wrestling and MMA, they're both hard things. King Mo went on to say that... Uh, MMA and pro wrestling are both hard, but he didn't realize just that... Welcome back, Steve. Nope, Steve's not there. Uh, now he's calling me, and now... Okay, you there now? Yeah. All right, I was uh, I was wrapping this up, so give me a second, then uh, we can do your plugs. Um, yeah, I was saying that, um, that yeah, King Mo went on to say that uh, pro wrestling's a lot harder than, than he uh, thought it would be, and he thinks it's harder than MMA. Um, you know... I don't, I don't know. I haven't done MMA. Uh, when I was younger, I used to fight a lot, a lot of street fighting. Um, so this is why, as Steve will know, and I'm not trying to pull myself over, Steve knows that I can hit hard and get hit hard, and it don't bother me. And uh, not a lot of wrestlers are like that, but I, I, was, I was conditioned to get punched in the face at a young age. Not so much an MMA punch, but a street fight punch. But yes, both are very hard, and uh, I have respect for pro wrestling, obviously, and I have a ton of respect for MMA, and uh, let's make this clear, I don't think that uh, myself could beat the shit out of any MMA fighter unless I was trained. Uh, these guys are world-class athletes, and I respect the hell out of them, and so does Steve. Now, Steve, uh, you want to plug anything real quick? You have two minutes. Uh, let's make it happen. Uh, definitely check me out at firstintensport.com. I'll be updating it. Hopefully soon, uh, the power situation is pretty bad, but you guys got to bear with us. As you guys have been so hardly doing, I appreciate it so much, uh, even with the, the calls. But um, check me out uh, at, my name is Stephen Dumeng, D-U-M-E-N-G, on Facebook.com. You can visit us at the Family Wrestling Entertainment page and online at fwrestling.com. And definitely uh, don't be afraid to add, say what's up, and definitely let me know if you have any opinions on MMA. I'm always going to hear and, and speak about it. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, please, 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 we really, truly uh, want to hear from the fans. Um, this is your opportunity. If you have any questions that you want me or Uncle Steve to answer uh, during our show as far as MMA, it can even be pro wrestling or it could just be life advice. Uh, 
yes, I'm young, but I've, I've uh, been through a lot of shit. And uh, I might not give the best advice, but I can give my honest opinion. And uh, we just really, truly, you know, want to thank you guys for uh, listening to our show. We had we had a good amount of viewers last uh, last week, and uh, we just want to continue it. And uh, thanks again for uh, being fans of mixed martial arts, being fans of pro wrestling. And just remember one thing, Ring Fever Radio and RingFever.com, where the fans are the stars. And Steve, listen, I say this all the time. There is no cure, man. There is no cure. Thanks again, my friend. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye.